Okay, welcome back to the e Shikshana program. So, we begin our lectures uh, now more seriously and then we will uh, the next two lectures you will see the introduction of the complex number system and various properties. Uh, that is the contents which you are going to see in lectures 3 and 4. So, we want to introduce complex number system. Complex number system. So, from the motivation of the last two lectures, we want to introduce, so this is our wish. So, let us start with our wish. We need a system, we need a system of numbers or you can call it, we need a number system denote it by C for the time being, denote it by C. And what are all our wish in this number system? In this number system, the first point we need is that the real number system is part of the number system. That is the one condition. You want to enlarge the system. And the secondly, the next point, want to solve x square equal to a, if a is a real number with a negative. In particular, we want, in particular, this is a particular case, when a equal to minus 1, you want to solve this equation, x square x. And you want to solve, you want to find solutions. It is very interesting to see that, at the end of this lecture, though we started with the solving x square equal to a with a negative, you will see that the new system which we are going to develop, you can solve x square equal to a even with a complex numbers. That is what I, so you have a much more advantages in proving the system and you will see more properties. And again from the intuition, intuition and previous experience, you have to see that. Previous experience, what do we have it? If at all you are defining a, want to have a minus a, if you, if you want to define square root of minus a with a positive, that means a is negative. This we can write it as minus 1 and into a, a is positive and we expect this to be square root of minus 1 into square root of a. And square root of a is already defined because a is negative as a real number. So, what I am trying to conclude is that if I can solve this equation, then I can solve this equation for any a by this formula. So, it is enough to introduce one object. So, that is what we are looking at it. This is what we are looking at it. We want to introduce some objects here. And after introducing that objects, you want uh, uh, that objects to solve that problem. And in that object, you should have the algebra of addition, multiplication, division and subtraction. You also need to define these things. So, symbolically, this is right now a symbolically. That is what you want to define one symbol. That symbol I call it i. And what is our intuition? This symbol after introducing algebra in C, which I am going to do it. Once we introduce an algebra of multiplication, this I should satisfy I square that is equal to I into I equal to minus 1. So, we need to have a system with an object together with an algebra of addition and multiplication. And with that addition which we are going to introduce should produce this input. So, that is the only new basically object we want to introduce. Then naturally if i is introduced, you want to introduce naturally there will be i a because i is a number which new object and there will be an addition there should be a new object and there will be an object uh, maybe I call it this to be b with b real and then a equal to a plus i b. So, this is what why we came up with a system of that form. 
So, let us formally introduce that way. So, you have your complex number system which I am going to introduce a plus i b with a b belongs to R. At present do not attach any meaning to this one. You just think that it is an object. In other words, given a given a comma b belongs to the real number system, you are associating an object, associate an object, that is what you are doing. This object should be unique, there is only one object. In both ways this association comes uh, a plus i b. This object I call it object or some term or some number whatever you want it call it. And it is not necessary that you have to associate in this way. In some books, some books you will see in this form, some books the same thing, I am repeating that formula, that notation is also writing in this one. The reason is that if some books you may see in this form, some other book you may see in this way. So, I am associating like a pair. So, given A and B, I call that. So, in fact, if you do not like to introduce a notation of this form I, you do not have to in introduce that notation, I can just associate it. What makes, what the thing is more important is its algebra, namely addition multiplication, which you do, which also we will get motivated in this way. So, basically immediately you know that if A is in R, I can associate a number corresponding to A, there is an association called A plus I 0, which is an element in C. You see, so there is an every real number A, I can imagine as an object A plus I 0. So, that means you will have R contained in C. So, that is the first thing I wanted. That is the condition we need a system in which R can be viewed as a subset of C. That is fine. Once that is done, how do you view my I in this notation? I can view, yeah, I, in this notation, like before coming to that, A can be viewed it in this form if you are using this notation. If you are using this notation, what we will get it? We are associating like A 0. You see, both are same. That is what I am saying. Whichever book you read it, whether you use this notation or this notation, does not matter. In this notation, this is in C. Both are same. On the other hand, what do you associate with my I? So, with my I, I associate 0 plus I in I 1, I into 1. Because 0 is a real number, 1 is a real number, this is an element in C. In this notation, what is it? In the other notation, I is associated with 0, 1. You see? So, this object is different. 0, 1 and 1, 0 are different. 1, 0 corresponds to 1 of real and 0, 1 corresponds to I, okay, and that is a new object, your new object. Similarly, if you take any A0 that is associated with A in R and 0 A, A is a real number, is associated with 0 plus I A. These are all your new objects, okay. With that, uh, with this now, I want to have it, my algebra of operations, okay. So, the first thing is achieved where we want to construct a number system. This is not a number system yet, it is only a collection of objects. A, a collection of objects will become a number system when you introduce its algebra, namely algebra of addition multiplication, multiplication okay. and other operations. How do we do that? How do I get motivation? So, we usually denote, a, uh, these numbers here are called complex numbers, usually denote complex numbers by z. So, I take a complex number x1 plus iy1 
where x1 y1 belongs to r and take another number w is equal to x2 plus i y2 where x2 y2 also belongs to r. So, how do you define my operation? Operation addition is easy. What are the motivations for defining addition? That is one important point I want you to tell you now. When you define an additive system up to R, you have realized there are some fundamental laws of number system. That is basically the associative law and distributive law. So, whenever you are defining a number system, uh, you have to follow, you have to have that uh, additional fundamental laws of number systems, uh, mainly associative, distributivity and other fundamental laws related to it. So, if you have to add these two numbers, I want to give a formula for this. This is the first number, okay. this is an object where it is just an object and I do not have any meaning for this plus right now. This is a combined object. If you put it, it will be okay, x1, y1 and then I have an another object x2 plus i y2. So, suppose you have a uh, addition is defined properly. When you define an addition, it should follow my associativity corresponding to my addition. So, I will be, I should be able to interchange. So, my definition is with that motivation of interchange, my definition of z plus w is equal to, I will add this and this, I will put it together, which is a real number, x1 and x2 are real numbers. And then I will add with the distribution law, I will do this because I need a distribution law eventually my number system to be satisfied. So, this is my definition of addition. So, what about the definition of multiplication? Now, let us go to the definition of multiplication. So, what do you do? Again, you have two numbers. I want to define z into w. So, I want to have this definition x1 plus i y1. Again, this is an object x2 plus i y2. How do you define my definition? How do I give my definition of this one? Again, I follow three things. One, one, two things. The one thing is that your law of number system should be satisfied, namely all the possible laws. And then our main wish is this one. So, that you have to incorporate in the definition. If I do that incorporation here by distribution and incorporation of i minus i2, I take x1, x2. So, that will be one term. Then I will, of course, I have to take this and this, this and this, and this and this. Now I combine this one. If I do this one, you will get i y 1 into i y 2. That by again by law, it would be i square y 1 minus y 2. But I want i square to be minus 1. So I just put a minus here, y 1 minus. And it, I want it a real number. Since these are all real numbers, this is a real number. Now if I combine this x 1 and y 2, I will get x1, y2 with an i here and I will combine this one, I will get y1, x2 and by distribution, I want this to be x2, y1, you see and that gives me my multiplication, okay. So, you have your addition and you have your multiplication immediately and uh, as I said, you have already i is equal to 0 plus i1. And so, the corresponding thing you can work it out. Now, we need a, so, uh, yesterday I have already talked to you about the complex plane. I will come to this complex plane later. This is my C complex plane and then there is a plane R2. This is the complex plane, complex plane and this is the R2 plane. And one of the distinction I mainly said is that complex plane is not just 
a collection of pairs of this form. When I call it a complex plane, this is a set of objects of the complex together with its addition and multiplication which I have defined. That is there. On the other hand, when you do an R2, you have only an addition property, similar addition property and also multi, uh, the, but there is no multiplication here. Okay, so is R2 do not have this one. So when you have an addition and multiplication operator and you will also see, uh, I may not do it everything here because this is a recap of some of the objects which you have studied. Uh, <coughs> you will see that C is a field. So if you do not know, don't worry about it. Those who know algebra, have studied the course in algebra, then you can see that C is a complex field. Okay. Because whenever there is a concept of field, there will be addition multiplication which will satisfy a set of property. Okay. Now, Z minus W is not, so given Z in C, so let me recall some of the, so this is called the complex plane, there is an R2 plane, both are different. I want to repeatedly tell you that one. Okay. But I want to some, uh, just recall some of the properties, I will not prove it. Uh, because you would have seen the properties which I am going to see already. But I, if you have not seen, please go through it carefully. Because after the next two, uh, this uh, next lecture, you should be comfortable with your complex, uh, complex algebra properly. Once you are comfortable with your complex algebra, and end of it, all the whatever I am going to do it with you, should be available with you in your fingertips and you in your mind. You should be able to think that quickly, you should be able to operate it that quickly. So given Z in C, I will tell you the geometric uh, interpretations of that soon by the end of this lecture or beginning of next lecture. Z in C, you define few operations, what is called a minus Z. So this is a definition, what is minus Z, minus Z is equal to, if Z is equal to X plus IY. or x1 plus i y1, whatever it is, because we are using that, x1 plus i1, then z will be minus x1 minus i y1. Because, and that is the same as minus x1, which is a real number, plus i into minus y1. This is your definition of minus z. And that is fine, because x1 minus x1 is a real number, minus y1 is a real number. So this is in the same form, a plus i b. That is what we are always defining. So it should be in that form all the time, you make sure that. And with this, I can define my Z minus W. Z minus W is nothing but Z plus minus W. And by that definition, you will get X1 minus, uh, if W is equal to X2, X1 minus X2 plus I Y1 minus Y2. Okay. So you have some nice things there. Division, I will, I will tell you in a minute. Division requires little more explanation. So let me recall some of the important properties. One of the, another important property is modulus of Z. So I'm just recalling, and I, as I said, I'll be giving interpretation. Modulus of Z, which will denote it by mod Z. How do you define that? mod z is equal to square root of x square plus y square, where z is equal to x plus i. So whenever you are writing, write your z in what way you are using it. Z plus i. So whenever z is x plus i y, you have mod z is equal to, so therefore mod z square is equal to x square plus All right, and how do you define square root? This is one thing. These are all various properties. Okay, modulus. You have another property. Uh, two, if you want, you have a property. Square root. W is called a square root. Called a square root of Z. If W square 
is equal to w into w which is now equal to z and you can prove that though I do not do it here you can show that every complex number has a square root that is very interesting in the real number system it was not there for example we have proved that uh, it has a square root for example we have proved x square equal to minus 1 you can check that now you can verify that if you this x equal to i is a square root is square, x equal to i uh, satisfies uh, i square equal to minus 1 therefore i is a square root of minus 1 i is a square root of minus 1 and uh, when i is a square root of minus 1 minus i is also a square root i is a square root minus i is also a square root square root ok minus i is also a square root in fact every real number is a square root ok let me tell you all now quickly everything if you have a if you write a is a positive number and uh, then you have a square root there are two square roots plus or minus a which are real numbers it is a square root when a is negative so you want to solve this equation that is the meaning of square root you want to find x such that x and for minus 1 you have to see you can see that i a square because a, a is negative so well, well, how do I write it if a is negative what do I do write a is equal to write a equal to minus b with b is positive therefore define i b what is my i b uh, and uh, since b is positive I can compute square root of b because b is a positive number I can find a square root of this and then what is this one this is equal to i into square root of b into i into square root of b now you can use your associativity all that property if you do this one you will get this is equal to i square into b b square i square into b but what is i square i square is equal to minus 1 and b is equal to minus a with a negative i want to solve this problem not x square equal to when if you are putting the condition i want to put a, a negative i want to solve this equation so this is i square is minus 1 b is minus a so this will be plus b and which is exactly you want uh, i square equal to minus 1 this is equal to minus b which is a a negative so you have a solution so i root i so what is uh, b basically modulus of b is same as basically modulus of b b uh, and a have the same uh, square root so i am, when a is negative if a is negative i am taking the square root of modulus of a so basically i am taking the if a is negative this is if if a negative i root a is a square root of square root of a okay minus i root a root a is also a square root of a so whenever a is negative modulus of a is always positive so you are taking it a sign so that is what so every equation x square equal to a so that means this gives you x square equal to a for any a in r has two square roots has two square roots of course a, a equal to 0 there is only one root a not equal to 0 square, square roots you see what I am trying to claim is that which I do not do it here but you can do it as an exercise instead of a fix z0 in a z 
with z0 in z you can solve the equation with z0 in z you can solve the equation z square equal to z0 and you can find the two square roots. Let me not get into all this because if I try to do all the exercises, uh, I will not be able to cover my topics here. So please go and work out all the details, all the school uh, things, how to compute on them, all that. With this information, with this information, yeah, one more information I need it, one more property. So, are you already defined z bar, did I define z bar? No. So, define conjugate of z, conjugate of z. What is conjugate of z? Denoted by z bar, which is equal to x minus i y if z is equal to x plus i y. Okay. So, you have this notation. So, you have z, z bar equal to x. Now, let me compute. I am going to motivate you the division now because you have defined addition, multiplication and subtraction. So, let me have the division now. Compute z, z bar. What is my z, z bar? x plus i y into x minus i y. That means x square minus i square y square, but i square is minus 1, this will become x square plus y square, but what is x square plus y square? My mod z square. So, you have your mod z square. So, you have a very interesting equation z z bar is equal to mod z square, do not forget this, this is important. So, even though z and z are complex numbers, Z, Z bar is a real number, okay? This is a real number, okay? This motivates to division. So, division, what do we want in the division? So, division, first let us define, you know that division by 0 is not allowed. So, assume Z not equal to 0, Z not equal to 0. What is the meaning of z equal to 0? z equal to 0 if both x and y are equal to 0. Yes, so, if z not equal to 0, it means that at least one of them not equal to 0. Either x not equal to 0 and y not equal to 0. Both can be non-zero, but for non-zero quantity means it will be one of them non-zero, therefore mod z not equal to 0. This implies mod z not equal to 0. Okay. One of them non-zero because both are non-negative numbers. So, one of them non-zero implies mod z, z equal to 0. Now, let us understand what is the meaning of a division. So, let me write it here itself for the convenience and then we will go there. What do we want by a division? First, let me define, def, uh, first, def, uh, first try to understand, first understand one over z for z not equal to 0. Okay? That is a major purpose. So, what is the meaning of 1? So, what is the meaning of 1 over z? That means, we need to find, we need to find A complex number w, complex number w such that zw is equal to 1. That is the meaning. So, if you can find a complex number w such that zw is equal to 1, then clearly w is you can define to be 1 over z. But now observe this one. If I have z, z bar from this equation 1, from 1, this is a real number. 
and division by real number is allowed. Though I did not tell about it, so let me tell you. If you have a complex number z is equal to x plus i y, then if I want to uh, divide by a, uh, a real number a is real, not equal to 0, then division by real number is easy. What do you do? You divide x by a plus i y by a. So there is no problem as far as division by real number is any. We want to do a division by a complex number. So since this is a real number, this is a complex number, we have from 1, we get z, z bar by mod z square is equal to 1. So a natural quantity for w is this one, obviously. So you can't, you cannot define something arbitrary. So it forces you, the relations forces you to define 1 over z naturally. So I define my definition. My definition, 1 over z is equal to z bar by mod z square. Okay. But what is z bar? Z bar if z is equal to x plus i y, my z bar will be x minus i y. So, this will be x, mod z square is equal to x square plus y square minus because it is z bar is x minus i y. So, you will have minus i y by x square plus y square. So, I have defined my 1 over z here. Now, it came naturally. You do not have to find for any motivation. The motivation comes from this formula. Once you know this definition, I can define for any two numbers w by z. That is difficult, easy. So, where z is equal to x plus i y, w is equal to x1 minus y1. So, because there are two numbers, so denoted by x1 y1, w is equal to x2 y2. So, what do I do here? This is equal to w into 1 over z. This formula should go. W by z is, it has to be w into 1 over z. In 1 over z, I have a definition z bar by thing. So, this definition is equal to, uh, because 1 over z is z. So, so, it is w z bar by mod z square. Okay. I do not want to expand it, but you can now do the expansion. You know what is w x2 plus i y2, z bar is equal to x1 minus i y1. So, you can compute this, you can compute your numerator and you can write your numerator. So, you have your division. So, you have defined all the fundamental operations of addition, multiplication and division. So, that is the four major operations, essentially two major operations. The other two addition and multiplication, the uh, subtraction and division, you obtain it as a consequences of the properties. So, with this you have everything. You have, you can, uh, you can enjoy now with your algebra number system, you try to prove whatever you can do it. Say for example, you have already i and with that, I, this is a new object, you got i square equal to minus 1. So, if I compute my i cube, it will be i square into i, I get minus i. And if I take i power 4, I get uh, uh, I, i square is minus 1, i square into i square, that will be minus 1 into minus 1, you get plus 1. So, if I do i, it is fourth power, I will get 1. If I do one more power, what will happen? i power 4 will take, so each i power 4, i will get a 1. So, it will remain, so it will repeat now. So, in case you can say that you can have i power 4n, any multiple of that will be your 1 and i power 4n plus 1 will be i plus 3 is i cube and you get your minus i. Where is your i coming now? This is i, this is minus 1 and this is 1. So, it repeats, so you can 
continuously. These are all some play to make your life familiar to you. Okay. And also I want to give you some more notation. Notation and thing. Uh, Z is equal to X plus I Y. Let me quickly do that. X is called the real part of Z. Real part of Z. That is denoted by R of Z. And Y is called the imaginary part of Z. Imaginary part of Z. It is denoted by I of Z. Okay. And in a complex plane, see, this is called the real axis. Let be familiarizable. This is your imaginary axis. And all of that. So your z bar is x plus i y. So z bar will be x minus i y. If I add what you will get, these two things will get cancelled. And divide by 2, I will get x equal to real part of z is equal to x z plus z bar by 2 and if I subtract this from here x x cancel I will get 2 i y so uh, that will produce my imaginary part of z imaginary part of z is equal to z minus z bar by 2 i do not forget this i here there is no i even though this is a real number i is there because there will be one i coming which will get cancelled so these are the two formulas you want to remember. Okay. And one few many many results you can prove it. I don't want to state each and every result. For example, you can prove proper, many properties you can be proved. So get familiarized before our next lecture coming with that. For example, if I take z plus w bar, you can separate it z bar plus it. prove this all. Okay. And mod z bar, z and z bar have the same modulus. That is easy to see, right? This is x square plus y square, square root. This is also x square plus y square. Minus y square, which will become y square. And z w bar, if you take a product and take its bar, is the same as z bar w bar. Okay? And, uh, and you also have one more property. Mod z w is same as mod z into mod w. All this can be quick proofs. But for a first time if you are reading, it is better that even if it is a trivial thing, you can, you should prove it. And quite often mathematics becomes difficult because we try to skip trivial things. Once you practice with your trivial uh, proofs, the complicated proofs can be written as a steps of small easy proofs. This philosophy you have to learn it. Okay. With that, I want to go to what is called the polar coordinate system. Okay. So I hope you are now comfortable with the algebra, with the things. So I want to go to what is called like something polar coordinates. Maybe. So let me have my board clean completely so that for the next step. All these things should be in your mind. In fact, all these things should be in your fingertips. So that uh, the study, the future study will be much more easy. If you try to remember all this blindly, you will have a problem. So the important thing is in mathematics is to try to get the concept properly, try to understand the easy way of looking at it and work out the exercises and problems that makes the subject more comfortable. Okay. Anything trying to remember blindly will have a problem later. Okay. Now we want to do things with polar coordinates. and geometric interpretation and geometric all these are all important geometric interpretation for the operations we have defined now okay so we'll do one by one that one 
All right. Okay. So first we want to understand what we call it an Argon diagram. So this is what is quite often uh, very interesting for you. Many things you can, you cannot prove, but you can get an intuition about it. Later do the algebra to prove results. So geometrical interpretation is only to get a visualization and get the concepts and end of it you prove using your analysis or algebra. Okay. What is our thing? So you start with a complex number x plus i y. I have a my complex plane. So that is what I am going to do it now here. You have a complex plane. You call this point. So that is a first interpretation. You will see how this applications coming into the chart. Corresponding to a z here, you can th uh, treat it as a point here. Somewhere you get a point. So this is your complex number. Okay. I am just writing p is the point here, which is your complex number, your p of z. Or if you want, if you are using other notation, it is, you can write p of x1. That way also you can write. Whichever you prefer, you can write it. But it is better to follow one notation. For some proofs, don't follow, take one notation and another thing, take some other notation. When you study for the first time, you keep one notation and do everything in the other notation. And the second notation you can get familiar. Once you have a p x y here, this is a, uh, so every complex number, this is uh, why the applications to physics is also coming. Corresponding to that, I have a vector here, you see, and this is origin, and OP is your position vector, position vector, which you have seen in your physics. So every point, you can associate a unique position vector. If I have another complex number here, I will have another position vector. If you have another, wherever it is, I will have a position vector. When you have a position vector, I also have a direction, you see. So it is a uh, vector means you have magnitude and um, uh, it, uh, it has also got a direction. So I want to treat and hence you can have an association with position vectors and the, vector, uh, and the position vectors and complex numbers. So you may be able to convert your physical problem into a complex analysis problem. That is what quite often we do. When you have a position vector, uh, you can treat your real axis as x. This is your imaginary axis. Either you denote by y or you denote by i y. Both are same. It depends on what way you are associating. So when I have your x y here, is a position vector. I can draw your purpose. These are all your familiar. So this will be your x. X means this distance. This distance is your y. But as a complex analysis, this is a point x plus i0 if you want it. This is a point x plus i0. This distance is x, which is the real number. This distance is y and this is a point. So if you talk this perpendicular, this is point i1. In other words, this is nothing like better than 0 plus i1. You can write it here. Uh, later we do not uh, do this. Yeah, by the way, what is the pseudo vector in uh, C? Pseudo is in C. I forgot to tell. Pseudo in C, we already told you. I, a plus, any vector A plus, I pseudo. So this is the vector uh, in C. Yes. But we do not write this way. We always use this way. When I am writing pseudo is in C, it is pseudo plus I pseudo. When I use pseudo in R, it is pseudo. So that is avoiding it. So when view it as an angle, it makes an angle theta. Okay. So that is called a theta. And what is this distance? This distance is nothing but uh, x, uh, square root of x square plus y square. And but what is this? This is nothing but your modulus. So the, if I call this to be z, this is modulus of z. So if I have this notation. So this distance wise, this is the modulus and this angle is theta. So I have a transformation now 
This is called the polar coordinate transpolar coordinates. Polar coordinates r theta. You have would have seen it in the real and it's a, because geometry is similar. Only the algebra is different. So you have r theta. What is the r theta satisfy? The transformation is what is the transformation? Transformation. Okay. Is x equal to r cos theta? You know that x is equal to and this is r. This is modular. Right? So, yeah, I will put this one. Y is equal to r sin theta. This, uh, this is called the polar, uh, polar coordinate transform. If you square it and sum it, you get r square is equal to x square plus y square. That is nothing but your mod z square. You see. And uh, subtracting from here to here, you will get uh, theta is equal to tan inverse of y over x. So, you have your relation x and y can be computed in terms of r and theta or r and theta can be computed in terms of r. So, x, y is the kind of Cartesian coordinates which you are familiar is the polar coordinates. So, you have this one. So, this full diagram where the, the diagram with all the representations is called the Argon diagram. This is called the, so you have all, if you mark it like this, you have all information here. And such a diagram is called the, where all your informations are there in the diagram. And this diagram is called the Argon diagram. So you, if you want, you can keep a point here. You can keep a point here, here. So R phi y. So you have your full information basically here. Okay. With that, we want to, we, with that, we want to uh, define the, what you call it. Uh, yeah, one more thing. This is called already the modulus. R is the modulus. Modulus. Okay. And theta is called two names. Argument of, of the complex number Z is called argument. Oh, it is also called amplitude, both the, so you can use both words. It is called the amplitude, okay. So you have your argument and amplitude which you are doing it. So, so you have a, 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 almost everything, all the informations are available and uh, you have your argons diagram here. And, uh, I think uh, now I will stop here for this lecture and after that uh, we will do more geometric interpretations of the various operations which I have defined and then we will try to solve little more objects we will see and uh, we will start.